All right, welcome to the Greg Steer Youth Ministry Podcast. I believe in the power of the gospel and the potential of teens, and I also believe that the best way to get teens to grow is to get them to go. So excited that you're here with us today. I really encourage you, uh, rate this podcast, subscribe to it, review it, get your youth leader network in on it, spread the word, because we believe in the power of the gospel to transform teenagers' lives. We also believe the best way to get teenagers to grow is to get them to go, and we want you to help us spread the word. Uh, I am super excited about our guest today, Jeff Wallace. Uh, excited. He's a personal friend of mine, known him for a long, long time. He currently serves on the Student Leadership University team as the executive director of the Lift Tour Youth Pastor Summit. He's also the founder of Frontline Urban Resources, which equips leaders to engage an evolving generation of families and teaches them how to reshape their traditional values of urban ministry and urban culture. 23 years as a youth development pastor, then executive pastor at Peace Baptist Church in Decatur, Georgia. He's authored, co-authored a number of books and resources, including Urban Ministry from Start to Finish, Everybody's Urban, The Skinny on Communication, 99 th Things Every Guy Should Know. Uh, he enjoys doing his life with his wife. Oh, man, I am not. How do you pronounce her name? Quavadis. Everybody calls her Quo. Quo. Yeah, like Q-U-O, yes. like quotation marks. Quo. And three yeah, boys, Jeffrey, Christopher, and Cameron. Quo. What a cool, cool name. Jeff, yes, thanks so much. Thanks so much for uh, being a part of this. Man, well, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. It's an uh, honor that the Greg Steer uh, asked the old little uh, youth pastor from Atlanta uh, to come and be on his podcast, man. So I'm, I'm excited to be here with you, brother. Yeah, and you, yeah, you were uh, for years a, a youth pastor from Atlanta, and you yeah, you man. were involved with Dare to Share early, early on. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, I served, man. It was cool, Greg. I got a chance to see three groups of sixth graders graduate from high school in my youth ministry, and so wow. that was a uh, fun man. And so Decatur is uh, inner city Atlanta, maybe uh, I would say about. 30 minutes from the city. Well, depend upon, you know, what time of day in Atlanta you're driving. That can be an hour, but without traffic, 30 minutes. But yeah, man, I was there for, uh, you know, 20 plus years. Got a chance to uh, do Dare to Share. Man, we use Dare to Share in a lot of different ways in our student ministry, especially when it came to doing outreach and evangelism campus ministries uh, in our church. I mean, it's anything evangelism based, man, in our student ministry, we definitely use there to share. You know, you once told me, I'll never forget this, you said kind of two things forged and formed your youth ministry philosophy. It was uh, Purpose Driven Youth Ministry by Doug Fields mm -hmm. and then Dare mm -hmm. to Share. And yep. it's, you know, I think the first, you know, four purposes uh, are so, so important. But that fifth purpose, uh, you yeah. know, Doug's own admission, that's the weakest, uh, you know, it was the weakest when he was at Saddleback. It's the weakest mm -hmm. in a typical church. And so that's a good balanced, you know, purpose driven yeah. and then dare to share to strengthen that evangelism effort. And I remember those days, I, man, were you at the World Congress Center uh, or the <laughs> Civic Center? I don't know if it you were there with the one time we went yeah. It okay. was World Congress Center. Yep, Georgia World Congress Center. Golly, that was a th that's a throwback. That's when throwback. Uh, it was the Georgia Dome, and and it was the Omni. I think it was the Omni before they changed it to State Farm. Yeah, uh, the best. It was yeah, the Omni. Yep, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, we did it there. I don't know if you were there the one time we did it at the Civic Center down there. I mean, mm -mm, that was no, real old Center. school. Re that yeah, was real. I didn't make the Civic. Oh man, that was dangerous. A little dangerous down yeah. there. That thing was broken up. <laughs> Just kind of like man, I, people. I mean, unless you're from Atlanta, Greg, you know, or you've done like you guys at Dare to Share have done as far as doing events all around the world, you know, you talk about it. Unless you've been there, you just don't know how hood it could be, and yeah. <laughs> especially that's a different. Um, you know, I was then. raised in I was raised in the Denver hood, but it's a whole different <laughs> level of hood. <laughs> I tell you what, you know what was crazy? Yeah. Johannesburg. That mm. in South oh, Africa. Yeah, yeah. I was there. Yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, this is yeah. this is a whole it's, different it's level. Different. Yeah, yeah, you know, Johannesburg is even is is worse or 
I guess it's different. I'll say it this way. Then South Africa, when you go down to the south, you know, I mean, even a little further south and, uh, you know, Cape it Town. really. Cape Town's Cape pretty Town. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cape Town. Yeah. You know, that's what they did. The safe house. Denzel Washington filmed the movie Safe House there in Cape Town. I didn't know that. Until oh, I didn't we were realize there. that. Yeah, oh, he wow. did. The arena, the arena scene that he's in there um, was there in downtown Cape Town area and wow. so yeah well that yeah, makes cape yeah. town even cooler right there yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome yeah man. So yeah yeah we're getting distracted um because we're yeah. <laughs> talking about good old times but you know i yeah. think the the bottom line is i mean evangelism is you know right at the center of your heart i know yeah and mm -hmm. leadership is at the center of your heart and i think it's really good uh to ask the question how is evangelism uh, central to helping students become effective leaders, in your opinion? Yeah, well, I think it's twofold. Number one, obviously, evangelism is the pathway in which we see students experience death to life uh, moments, right? You know, those who were saved or excuse me, mm -hmm. those who are lost become saved through uh, evangelism. So obviously, as a Christ follower, as a leader, um, um, as someone who wants to see the gospel preached to the four corners of the earth, evangelism, in my humble opinion, is essential to that, right? And mm -hmm. so, but it's it's the first pathway. It is one again to see death to life experience, but then also the evangelized in turn, Greg should become the evangelist, right? And mm -hmm. so, I believe that we've all been saved to be sent. And so mm -hmm. as the Lord allows us to have those death to life moments and we've been saved and uh, we've experienced the, the gospel for ourselves, man, in turn, there should be a hunger and a passion and a desire for everyone that you come in contact to experience the same thing that you've experienced. So I think, you know, as a Christ follower, as a believer, Greg, mm -hmm. I think evangelism is essential, you know, and um, yeah. I, and I would say a non-negotiable in my humble mm -hmm. opinion. You know, I think it is. It's well, and you know, as you think about what what I've noticed, you know, in doing Dare to Share, I actually find urban youth leaders much more in tune with the strategic importance of evangelism than suburban youth mm. leaders for whatever reason. Mm. Um, we've yeah. done trainings. I remember going to uh, the Bronx and doing a training mm -hmm. with, and it, they're all volunteer youth leaders. I don't think there's a yep. full-time they were there taking notes, asking questions. How do we implement? Because for them, mm -hmm. it wasn't – youth ministry is not at all about the fun and games. It was about no, saving lives and giving yeah. hope. And uh, I don't know yeah. if that, that's your experience as a urban youth oh. leader, but – yeah, a hundred percent. You know, we always say as urban leaders that, you know, um, our students are in what we call survival mode, man. I mean, you know, students uh, in my context where my church was, you know, many of them, Greg, have never been out of their zip code, their block. Mm -hmm. All they know is their hood, their area, their um, context. And for many of the students, you know, that came through my youth group, graduated from high school, for many of them, it's like getting a Ph.D., Right. And mm -hmm. so uh, when you have single family household, low income families, tr a lot of truancy issues, gang, drug violence, man, I mean, we want our kids to just survive. Now, it's not all of them, but there are many uh, in yeah. our context who, man, we're just trying to get them to um, uh, experience hope and to see life through a different lens. And uh, and so evangelism for for me as an urban leader, many of my colleagues, my urban ministry colleagues, man, it was an essential uh, to the survival as uh, an urban youth leader, man. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing evangelism, if you're not, see, because if you're not giving an urban kid hope, it's going to yeah. be hard to help them go deeper in their, their, their faith walk. Because for many of them, man, they're just trying to make it through the next 24 hours, right? And you're yeah. trying to give me you know, uh, this discipleship track on how to become a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ, bro. I'm just trying to eat today. I'm trying to yeah. survive today. I'm trying to yeah. make it today. And uh, and I've watched my brothers, sisters, family members, loved one uh, be, be uh, taken from me in the most God, um, mm -hmm. uh, God, most horrific way possible, man. And you want me to go through this 
the discipleship track. Nah, man. And so for many of us, uh, and especially my experience, man, evangelism was very much a part of the strategy for how we help our students in our context find hope. Mm. I think that's so true, Jeff. I mean, I was talking to somebody the other day about lottery tickets and I said, you know, rich people don't scratch. <laughs> they don't, they don't go, you know, it's not rich people buying lotto tickets. It's poor people because yeah. uh, they're scratching for hope. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of, a lot of urban kids, I was one of those kids that mm -hmm. scratching for hope, not, not lotto tickets, but looking for it somewhere. Yeah, man. And yeah, the man. gospel, man, it addresses, uh, identity, belonging, and purpose. Identity yep. as a child of God, belonging, and a crew. You got a crew, the family of God, a yeah. purpose, and also destination. Like I know I'm going to yep. heaven. I'm yes. not afraid of dying. You know, for, and for yep. me, I almost died several times as an inner city kid through various circumstances. But I was once I knew Christ, I was not afraid to die. Which is that's a bigger deal when you actually could die. Mm -hmm. In, yeah. in a in a setting, um, an urban setting, you know, some you know yeah. high crime rate area, urban setting anyway, yeah. where that can happen. Yeah, so. man. Yeah, and I think it's important that you know, for me, it was helping my students see themselves through the lens of the gospel, not the lens of culture, not the lens mm. of their generational curse, you know, or uh, just what's what's been going on in their block, man. And, uh, yeah. and so for me, we would always try to expose our students to various things, Dare to Share, Student Leadership University. Um, mm. You know, we would do a lot of mission trips, even if they were like local mission trips, you know, to, yeah. to say, hey, man, even though you feel like a, a castaway throwaway or giveaway, or you feel you know, just dejected or like, you know, um, so helpless and hopeless. Can I just tell you, there's others who are even in worse situations uh, than you are. And so trying to help yeah. our students, I always would say, Greg, that, you know, I would tell my team, my volunteers and my, my pay staff, we want to help expand every urban kid from having a single story perspective to a multiple story perspective. Meaning mm -hmm. we just didn't want them to see themselves as a kid in Decatur, Georgia, we want them to see themselves as a, a, a person who um, the Lord knew even before the foundation of the earth, before they were formed in their mother's womb, that he had yeah. a plan and a purpose for their life and that there is life beyond what they yeah. see right now in their circumstances. I love it. And there's a, a universal church that started 2000 years ago. They're part of this giant crew. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is not in our questions, but I'm going to ask it. How do we break down the dividing wall between, I just think there's a lot of, there's urban churches and youth ministries, mm -hmm. there's suburban, and it feels mm -hmm. like an Ephesians 2 scenario, you know? <laughs> yeah. How do we, have you seen that happen at all? And how can we really work together? My buddy Derwin Gray is always talking about building multi-ethnic mm -hmm. uh, churches, you know, where, where we can, where there's you know, multi-ethnicities, you know, how do we build churches like that? And how do we get youth leaders uh, from the suburbs and the city, like, yeah. working together? Yeah. Well, I, I think, number one, this is going to sound like a Captain Obvious statement, but, you know, youth leaders need to ask themselves, do you want to stay relevant or not? I mean, because mm -hmm. culture is evolving, Greg, is ever evolving. And whether we like it or not, it is what it is. We have a responsibility not to just see mm -hmm. or assess the data. We have a responsibility to respond to the data. So I think the the culture at large, what I've seen is the culture at large has already become a mesh up society where it's no longer about black, white, Latino, Native American, um, um, Asian or, or Hispanic or Latino. I mean, it's not about different ethnic divisions. I mean, there are some ethnic differences that yes, and cultural differences that are there, but it's not about ethnicity as much as it's what I call common ills. You know, there are things that every kid, regardless of their ethnicity, mm. they're dealing with that ties them together. Fatherlessness being one of them. 
Um, yeah. When I wrote the book, Everybody's Urban, what made me, mm. um, what brought me to that title, Greg, was I was telling a buddy of mine who was a student pastor at a very affluent suburban church about the context and the premise of the book. And I was saying, man, you know, a lot of my kids, you know, one of the categories I'm talking about, I was talking about identity and sexuality and all that stuff. But I was talking about fatherlessness and I was talking about the psychological uh, um, impact that an absent father uh, mm -hmm. has brought to students in our youth group. And I talked about it from the standpoint of a girl and a boy. Um, and I talked about, man, you know, his presence uh, impacts, you know, how they see themselves and the rap, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So he sits back in his chair and he says, Jeff, man, I have the same issues in my suburban context. And I'm like, man, mm -hmm. get out of here. You have folks with seven figure salaries in your church. And he's like, yeah, I know. But the fathers in my church, they're businessmen and they travel. And so they're not there. So what they do is they are present on paper, but not present in spirit. Yeah. And they substitute presence and gifts for presence and love. And so yeah. the byproduct of that emotionally and psychologically, some of the things that your students in your urban context are dealing with, my students in a suburban context are dealing with. And I was like, wow. And so that's where it kind of started the concept that everybody's urban. So yeah. I think, Greg, one of the things that we as leaders need to understand is that until we divorce ourselves from an antiquated approach of seeing youth ministry, we won't become truly the mm. multi-ethnic um, not multicultural, but multi-ethnic uh, youth ministry that this generation, especially the emerging generation that's not just Gen Z, but the generation that's coming behind Gen Z that's in children's ministry right now, man, we got to understand we need to update our curriculum. We need to update our strategy. We need to update our resources and books and our approach to ministry because culture is changing. We just need to keep up with the time. Yeah. That's really good stuff. And I think it's, I think it's really important. I, I've always said, yeah, I never had a dad. I didn't know my dad, but in some ways I think it'd be harder to have a dad who wasn't there emotionally, like mm -hmm. didn't care. Like that, yeah. that'd be really hard, you know? Yeah. So I love yeah. that. Every, every, everybody's urban. That's the name of the book. Mm -hmm. Yep, everybody's yeah. urban. Yeah. And so we talk about the, it's like this mesh up society that culture is in right now. Uh, where it is, and actually what's crazy is I wrote it, I feel like I wrote it almost 10 years too early, right? Oh. And uh, I started seeing some like, right now, if I would have wrote it today, man, it probably would be a bestseller. Uh, and, um, Just revise but, and update it. Revise and update oh, it. Yeah, oh, yeah. as soon as I finish my PhD, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And so, but, uh, Am I going to have yeah, to man, call so you doc Dr. Jeff Wallace after that? No, man, I'll still be Jeff, your brother. And so... <laughs> Yeah, but no, man. So yeah, it is. Uh, you're spot on, uh, Greg, and what you're seeing. And it's so important that we acknowledge the truth that, um, kind of, if I can say this right here without getting in trouble, hey, if you're if you're a white if you're a white dad, your daughter might like a black boy, right? And and because they don't see color, they see common connection. You know what I mean? And and I think that is the thing that as we see culture evolve in student ministry in particular, man, we're going to have to be honest about the times so that we can respond accordingly. Yeah. You know? Amen. Amen. Well, let's talk yeah. a little bit about uh, student leadership and lift. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I mean, all that you mean, I, you guys just have so many, I mean, it's yeah. like so many ways to really help teenagers and help youth leaders help teenagers and build student yeah. leaders. Tell us a little bit about Student Leadership University and Lyft and what you yeah. guys do and offer yeah. to, to serve youth leaders. Yeah. So it's funny, we're talking about evangelism. And so strategically, the basis of what we do at Student Leadership University is we take students on a discipleship journey because fundamentally and strategically, we believe that leadership is synonymous to discipleship. Right. Um, most of the students, if not all, that go through the SLU journey, um, they've already been evangelized, if you will. I'll talk about Lyft and the evangelism arm of our organization. But Student Leadership University as a whole, uh, we want to help students tell a different story with their life. We want to teach them how to think, how to dream, how to lead at the feet of Jesus. We're not teaching them what to think. We're trying to teach them how to think. We believe that 
there's a there's a lost art um, that many of our students don't know any longer, and that's critical thinking skills. How to think critically yeah. about things. So we take them on a four tier journey. So the first one is SLU 101. Uh, we do five weeks in Orlando, two weeks in San Antonio, and it's rules, tools, nuts and bolts, intro level of leadership. So there they're going to learn how to be excellent in all things. They're going to we're going to have. Um, how to develop a biblical worldview session. We'll have leadership mm -hmm. perspectives. You've taught many of our leadership perspectives before, you know, on different things. And um, we've we talked that we're going to talk about um, how to master the art of self leadership. So you will do personality assessment, goal setting, time management, all these things. So we're really trying to mm -hmm. give them the entry level of leadership and helping them say, hey, um, if you practice these principles, you can really start the journey of becoming the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So then SLU 201, when they finish 101, they go to 201, which is in Washington, D.C. So there we're going to spend a week experiencing D.C. And I mean experiencing it. So we'll stay at the Marriott Crystal um, uh, Gate Hotel there. And, um, and they're going to hear from men and women from Congress and Senate. They'll hear from a gentleman by the name of Chaplain Barry Black, who's the chaplain of the U.S. Senate. They'll go to the press club. They'll visit a lot of the national monuments. Um, they will go to the tomb of the unknown soldiers. They'll do a reef land ceremony. It's really, really cool because we're not trying to teach them to be Republican or Democrat. We're saying, hey, if you apply these same principles that you're hearing, maybe the Lord will use you to be salt and light in the public square. And so there they're learning leadership through the lens of the local government. Uh, and then when they complete that, then we take them to the next journey or next step of the journey, which is SLU 301. And SLU 301, Greg, we take them to Paris, London, Oxford, and Normandy. So they're going to experience Europe. It's a European trip and uh, they're going to um, learn leadership through the lens of world history. They're going to hear a lot about C.S. Lewis, Winston Churchill, John Wesley. Um, I love teaching that point of, Point the Hawk and, uh, and, and talking about the Battle of Normandy and, and saying to students, because we're out of the classroom, 101 and 201 in a lot of ways are in the classroom. Uh, 301 is very experiential, meaning the, the classroom are the sacred hollow grounds of Point the Hawk or Omaha Beach. And, um, and so there we're saying, hey, where you're standing right now, uh, men not too far from your age, they, they um, shed their blood so that we can experience certain freedoms. And, uh, and they sacrifice knowing that they jumped out those duck boats, stormed those beaches, scaled those walls. Yeah. Um, they knew they were on a suicide mission. And, and I would always ask students, I wonder what those students were thinking about as they're climbing those cliffs that, that literally, Greg, are right behind them. We're right there where the 100-foot cliffs are. And I said, I wonder what they're thinking about as teenagers, many of them, they're young adults. And, and um, you know, maybe they're thinking about their families. Maybe they're thinking about what their life could have been. Um, or maybe they were thinking about the last thing they heard General Eisenhower tell them when he said, the eyes of the world are upon you. And just as General Eisenhower told those brave men who scaled those walls, we're saying to you right here, right now, the eyes of the world are upon you. So it's really, really an awesome time. Uh, for students to experience that. We'll go to Windsor Castle, Buckingham Palace. Uh, we'll go to Paris and debunk a few myths. They'll think Paris is so romantic and beautiful. They'll see that it's dirty and the people are rude. And, uh, and so, but it's just fun to experience world history uh, at SOU 301. And then finally, at SOU 401, we go to Israel and Jordan. And we, we start with the end in mind because we believe that leadership is uh, begins at the feet of Jesus. So that's the SLU 401, I'm excuse me, 101 mm -hmm. to 401 journey. And then the lift tour is of so if 101 to 401 is the discipleship arm of our organization. Lift tour is the evangelistic arm of our organization mm -hmm. where it's a it's a, a 18 to 20 city like D now weekend on steroids that we do, man. I mean, we go to cities from the East Coast to the West Coast, two days um, we're going to do three things. We're going to um, engage scripture because we believe the Bible is enough. We're going to exalt Christ. We're going to make Jesus known. And we're going to empower students and give them a mm -hmm. real world walk away. So everything that they hear from stage translates through small group questions and, and devotions that we'll have. And we love it, man. We'll see uh, 15 to um, 
20, sometimes 1,000 students, man, experience scripture. We see so many death to life um, uh, moments there. And so we love that because we get to uh, preach the gospel to thousands of students between Martin Luther King weekend and the middle of March. So it's like the Wikipedia version of what we do. No, it's yeah. great because you guys do so much. And another thing that you guys do that I'm I'm much more familiar with is Youth Pastor mm-hmm. Summit, uh, yeah. which is multi cities and mm-hmm. um, with Dallas, uh, Nashville, Nashville, uh, Orlando, uh, California, Orlando, California, and you really, I mean, it's like. What ten, fifteen, twenty dollars? It's like fifteen you bucks, bring in man. Fifteen <laughs> bucks, and you bring in some. You bring in great speakers and me. Yeah. <laughs> and then oh, there's no, Greg. Man. And, uh, no, man, uh, you, you, you move we, the needle big time, brother. Oh, we love it, and and uh, and it's really pouring into those youth leaders. It mm-hmm. is so good. Uh, you guys do such a great job, and. This year we're adding Chicago, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, um, yeah, man. So, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Why Chicago? Yeah, well, one great pizza and uh, Garrett's popcorn. <laughs> <And that's> a, <laughs> but no, seriously, you know, because wherever there is a need to serve youth leaders, that's where we want to go. Honestly, great. Yeah. I mean, it is a place that uh, you know, uh, through our partnership and relationship with Dare to Share. As we've talked over the years about it, man, it's such a prime area, that Great yeah. Lakes, Midwest area. And we we envision for Youth Pastors Summit to be in every major market and region within the United States. And it's just it. two days. As a fellow youth pastor, man, it's just two days where we want to love on uh, educators, Christian school educators, youth pastors, yeah. leaders, and their volunteer team. And say thank you for investing in the life of this generation. So it's it's about community, it's about soul care, and um, and it's about collaboration. How we come together and work together as the body of Christ to to uh, to change a generation and sh- and point them to Jesus. And so we're so grateful, man, for mm-hmm. for you and Dare to Share, man, how you guys have been a part of this. And and uh, there's so many cool. Uh, I have so many, we don't have time to share them all, but I have so many cool Greg Steer uh, numchuck stories or <laughs> <laughs> or or, uh, or sermons, man, that's just been so good. But it's just a time, man, to love on students. Yeah. And, and and it's a gift. We say it's a gift. That, that $15, great to be completely honest and transparent. The only reason we charge $15 is because we've had to expand um, our registration process and that just covers the cost of the software yeah. uh, to do that you know but other yeah. than that man it's just a I mean gift it's it's a huge huge value that you guys provide and we we were blessed to be a part of it looking forward to going to Chicago because we have a Shot long town. history in the Midwest and uh, yeah. hoping to get a lot of youth leaders out to that I, speaking of youth leaders I would love to bring a youth leader on into this conversation yeah. He's been listening in patiently. Wes Jones entering his 12th year in student ministry, uh, leads Lyft Student Ministries in Westminster, Colorado. How ironic. At Family like in Christ like Community that. Church. Been married to his wife, Katie, for four years. Together, they love to travel camp, adventure with the goal of traveling to every national park in the U.S. They crossed off four this year already. When they aren't traveling, their favorite pastime is board gaming. And with that little free time he has left, he loves to do all things sports, watching, playing, regularly plays racquetball, pickleball, basketball, spike ball, and volleyball. And I have no idea what that is. But anyway, Wes, (laughs) thanks so much for coming on. And you've been listening patiently. And thanks so much for being a part of this. And I just want to open it up for you and and Jeff to talk. Any questions or comments you have uh, listening to Jeff? of course, yeah. Excited to be to be on, Jeff. I thought it was neat uh, that we kind of had the little uh, match with the lift. Yeah, I saw that. I was thinking, Wes. I was like, yo, because that looks like how we do lift a little bit, and it's close to our cousin. We do like a purple little triangle uh, over the eyes. Yeah. So I was like, Wes, this is profound. This is prophetic, man. That you know, I, I know it was. And then, and I was thinking, I was like, well, I won't do it. But I was thinking, I was like, okay, if we wanted to do like a nice little lift tour beanie, that's what it would look like. And uh, and so, man, it was really, really cool. He has, he has ladies and gentlemen, a, a cool little lift beanie on, and uh, it says lift on it. And I was like, that's 
that's real dope. So you know, if we you had, thought it was you, you thought it was just you thought he was just kissing up to you and like I'm gonna wear my. I, I did yeah, actually, it's... and I was grateful for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was really cool, it. man. Yeah, so great to meet you, brother. Yeah, good to meet you too. Hey, I was I was listening in, and I loved the quote you said: "Leadership is synonymous to discipleship." Mm. Um, and I would love to hear maybe your take and in, in your years in youth ministry and working with students. How have you seen that? Uh, that quote lived out. Uh, yeah. What types of leaders have you seen kind of evolve as they've gone through um, this discipleship process with you guys? It's a great question, Wes. And so here's what I've, I've seen. When students um, have an idea and understanding of who they are in Christ, there is a natural hunger and thirst to go deeper in God's word and also to be um, a leader in our in ministry. And so for me in an urban context specifically, whenever, you know, um, I would have students who would come, rather they were involved in some extracurricular activities, <laughs> you know, uh, that was not God honoring um, when we met, but then they gave their life to Jesus. You know, I would always share with the man that you have leadership skills, man. You have leadership you know, um, influence and uh, and abilities that you've just not channeled in a positive manner. And what would happen if you would, now that you've given your life to Jesus, what will happen if you would channel that capacity and ability that's in you in the ministry? Man, just think about the number of people that you can impact. And so what I've seen, Wes, is that when, when uh, many of my students recognize, oh, one, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and I'm really created in the image and likeness of God, and that God has a plan and a purpose for my life. And they live out, we would always say, we want you to live out 1 Peter 2 and 9. It says that you, you know, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, of people, you know, who belong to God. That, you know, he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. When, when students really understand that, now they want to go deeper into their walk with Jesus, but they also want to share what they've experienced and what they've seen with uh, others. I always give it, I always make the example, Wes, it's almost like for me, I am a fan of the Chick-fil-A sandwich. And because I believe that the Chick-fil-A sandwich has been kissed by God and anointed, I um, am very, very bold about highlighting cheap copies of a great original. So for others out there who may try to uh, have a chicken sandwich. I believe that the Lord wants us all to eat more chicken from Chick-fil-A. So I'm going to, yeah. you know, stand on the highest mountain and tell people to eat a Chick-fil-A sandwich because I believe in it just that much. I'm a Chick-fil-A ambassador. And so, but as much as I love the Chick-fil-A sandwich, man, I love sharing the good news gospel uh, even more. And it's like that with my students, man, when you experience the real thing, you should be compelled or have a desire to want to share it with everybody you come in contact with. But as a person who's going through a discipleship process, that discipleship process in that way, if we cultivate leaders, it helps them be bolder evangelists for the gospel. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that lived out in the lives of many of our students. Like, I very much take the approach that evangelism is a non negotiable. Mm -hmm. You are, you said something about, um, like once you're saved, you're immediately sent. And I was like, yeah. yes, amen. Amen yeah. to that. Um, and I think it's so cool that discipleship is so much of a journey of when you come to know the Lord, you seek to share him with others mm -hmm. and teach others how to do it. And yeah. it's neat to watch students lead in that way because yeah. we, though we are not Chick-fil-A ambassadors, we are called ambassadors for Christ. And so, mm -hmm. Um, I, I like I love that analogy. Like when you when you love something, you're compelled to go uh, mm -hmm. and share it with others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, I, I think it's just it's, it should be a natural response, man. I mean, when you have an encounter with Jesus, I mean, let's think about the one who had, uh, in my opinion, one of the most significant encounters, the Apostle Paul on that Damascus Road, you know, experience. It changed his life in such a way that it compelled him yeah. to send letters to churches all over. 
and and but it was that encounter man that just changed the trajectory of his life forever and we see that lived out in the lives of students man when they have an encounter with jesus man it, it changes their life forever and so our job as leaders is to cultivate that in a very healthy way so that they can they can you know um live out their faith in a very responsible and practical manner and so uh, that's what i've seen yeah, so that's you, why i love, love that oh, yeah, i'm sorry yeah as you say that do you have any like practical tips to give youth leaders like me or anyone listening on how to cultivate that type of leadership within your students as you've lived it out in an urban setting um yeah i mean you it can be urban suburban whatever what yeah, are some ways yeah. to cultivate that within your leaders yeah well and i'm not just saying this because you know this is greg's podcast and uh but i think it's i think i believe in partnership and collaboration i don't believe in reinventing the wheel i believe that there's so many great organizations uh curriculums and 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 events that are out there that man sometimes students need to see it and experience it and even hear it from a different voice as their youth pastor out and i know my my kids would hear from me every week and so sometimes it was great to throw a video of greg steer on or you know or, or brent crow from slu i mean it, it that to hear i can say the same thing but when they say it it just hits a little bit different so i think um being very intentional about i try to west try to have a you know purpose-driven youth ministry resource that i could share with my leaders this is the strategy this is the direction i needed a dare to share to empower my students to be saved and now that you're saved you're sent but then i needed a student leadership university to take a my youth leadership council and go deeper and then what i would do is fold those moments back into the life of our student ministry. So I would say if you are a student leader, listen to this, man, find places and organizations and programs that you can come alongside of and really kind of help walk along you in your process. So if you're looking to have a healthy evangelism strategy and process, then dare to share live you got to get to a dare to share live if you you know what i mean like i think there's just so many different things that are out there so that's number one but then also um in a practical way i'll say this don't look for your traditional looking leaders man be intentional about challenging those kids who are the some of the quiet introverts you need to pull the lead the god's calling them to be a leader he's calling them to be evangelist you need to um uh deal with some of those knuckleheads who you know because lord knows i was a i'm a recovering knucklehead you know and uh if somebody saw something in me that i didn't see myself in myself so don't yeah. throw away yeah. don't throw away or dismiss those quote unquote trouble kids or or loud mm -hmm. you know um or bad kids or whatever you know what i mean like however you label them man those are the ones that you need to really look deeply at and so it's not just those kids who are the deacons kids or your elders or church leader kids the good kids nah man you want to find those those hot coals that the lord wants to shape into and press and turn into a diamond and uh and so i think you know so don't look for the traditional kid you know but also be intentional about um who you partner with but then my last thing, and probably this is the first thing, is you need to have your your a simulation process as a student leader, leader, whether it's discipleship assimilation, uh, evangelism assimilation, or volunteer leader assimilation process. You need to have it down in such a succinct way that you have an elevator pitch where you can, um, in a very effective way, articulate how you want to assimilate people you know, depending upon that area of ministry, how you want to assimilate them from point A to point B. So often we know the what we need. We just have a hard time articulating how we want to get there. But when yep. you as a leader can have a very clear, it's like Habakkuk says, we have right division, make a plan, have a very clear process that's multi-layered and has a, 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 a multiple entry um, points again evangelism entry point discipleship entry point leadership entry point volunteer recruitment and assimilation entry point you got to be able to articulate it because um as the great leadership guru john maxwell says he says we teach what we know but we reproduce who we are 
people aren't going to follow you if you don't know where you're going. So I think that's important yeah. as a youth leader. Yeah. One of the things um, I've tried this year, I, I have a student leadership team and have had one for many years and have been working mm-hmm. on you know, developing leaders and disciples, uh, one and the same. One of the things I've tried this year is combining my adult leader team with my student leader team. Mm. Um, together, collaborative, collaboratively, like sh- showing, hey, we all have the same level of input and we're all working towards the similar goal to make disciples yeah. who make disciples. Mm-hmm. How have you experienced um, adult leaders coming alongside students? And, yeah. and then maybe on the flip side of it, how have you seen students lead adults uh, yeah. in this journey of yeah. evangelism? Well, I think great youth ministry has to be for the people, by the people, meaning what is more attractional in a youth ministry is when students see other students that are on fire for Jesus and that are leading. So what I've tried to uh, structure in my youth ministry is kind of like, um, you know, a high level 30,000 foot view um, range of adult leadership where we kind of be like a Paul Timothy type of model where you're always mentoring somebody as an adult leader. You're walking alongside them, you're discipling them, you know, as far as my student leaders. And so we want to, you know, we always try to create community where they do life together, but we want to do it where as we're doing life, walking you through your own issues and, and adolescent development, we want to raise the bar and say, hey, we believe that the Lord can use you to lead in very high level leadership um, uh, ways. So we, we we have what we call, Wes, high, low, and low highs uh, roles, meaning, and then high highs. I think it was high highs, low lows, and low highs. And I'll, I'll explain it. So we had some roles that were high commitment and high impact, low commitment, low impact, and then low commitment and low impact roles, depending on uh, the leader. Like an example of a low impact, I mean a low um, position, but I would say low impact. It's not low, but it, like if you're a facility, if you want to like a facility set up person, right? Some students we learn how you had to ease them into leadership. So we said, hey, yeah. you're going to be responsible for setting up the youth room on Wednesday nights. And so low commitment and it it was low. We wouldn't say low. I wouldn't say this is a low, low moment, like low impact and uh, low commitment. But I just was able to, for me, because I'm a visual learner, I had to see that. And so these are roles where I could say, if I got a kid who's a little apprehensive about that, and I even have an adult leader who's kind of a little timid in their leadership, I would put pair them together and put them as your facility setup. But then there are some that is low commitment, but high impact, like a greeter. We had a youth ministry greeter. If you were on our greeter, man, that's not a big thing because you're holding signs in a parking lot or outside. But man, it's that first impression that has a high impact in our student ministry. And so we would have an adult leader to walk alongside them. They will monitor. Hey, guys, y'all didn't smile like that. you like you should. Or, you know, you got to keep your energy up. But then we had high commitment, high impact. Anything that was on the stage, worship team, uh, hosting, um, uh, sometimes doing messages or whatever, high commitment, high impact. And and we walked alongside them accordingly. So I think for me, I've tried to, like I talked about having multi, multi entry points for both adults and student leaders so that one, there's always collaboration but you're meeting both students and adult leaders where they are. And so that's kind of how yeah. we've done it. So I, I love seeing it done in a collaborative manner, but just having different entry points. So I'm gonna, that's awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in here. Uh, Wes, those are excellent questions and excellent insights, Jeff. Um, mm-hmm. Just because I, I guess I wasn't uh, ready for such practical, like you, you, you are a, OGG, Original Gospel Gangster. You've been doing this for a long, long time. And uh, so those practical tidbits, I mean, it's great. I, You know, sometimes I have my guests are very theoretical and, you know, mm-hmm. academia. Uh, you are that and you get some stuff there, uh, the very practical level that youth leaders can walk away with. So I mm-hmm. really appreciate that. And Wes, again, great, 
great insights yeah. and i am so proud of you wes for really yeah, building student leaders and gospel advancing disciple multiplying student leaders you're helping to lead the way in the denver area for what that can look like and change the face awesome. of youth ministry so thank you guys so much for being a part of this and uh, uh youth on behalf of the youth leaders tuning in jeff uh if people want to find out more about mm-hmm. uh slu youth pastor yeah. summit uh lift tours what's the best way for them just to find out everything that you guys do yeah just yeah, man, just go to our website, SLU Lead, SLU Student Leadership University, lead.com. So SLU Lead, and you'll see us, you'll find everything there. You'll see the icons for Lyft, the icons for UPath Summit, and SLU Journey. So it's all right there. A lot of stuff. And then if people want to follow you, what's the best way for them to follow you? Oh, uh, my handle is simple. It is just I am, I A M, Jeff Wallace. So that's Twitter, Instagram, and then Facebook is just Jeffrey Wallace. I think it's 315. You know, it's a lot of Jeffrey Wallace's, and that's yeah. uh, R E Y instead of E R Y. Great, great. Well, thank you guys so much for being a part of this. And again, Wes, excellent insights and questions. Yeah, man. Uh, And remember, just as you're listening, youth leaders, get the word out about the podcast. And remember that a thriving youth ministry is a gospel advancing one. So continue to advance the gospel. Thanks for tuning in.